All right. Uh, great to be with you today. Congratulations again yesterday on completing the book of Ecclesiastes. Fantastic job in uh, finishing up another book of the Bible. I'm so appreciative that you are reading with me every day. Keep it up. Even if for some reason you kind of fall behind, just keep jumping back in and uh, keeping up because this is such a good discipline for us to be doing. Just reading every day making sure we're in the Word, reading through the entire Bible um, in a year, and uh, just really commend you for doing this. And so you've just packed away a lot of wisdom, and uh, we're going to continue on going through the book of First Chronicles. If you remember, it's basically it's chronicling the history. Um, the, as, the, as the people that have been in exile, they're returning, and uh, they are rebuilding their lives, and they are being reminded of all of the things that uh, God has done for them, and uh, it's recording um, all of these things. And, and so now we're, we're in where it's talking about David, them bringing back the Ark of the Covenant, and it's reminding them of their history, of where, they, where they've come from, where they're going, and the way that God has, has preserved them and worked specifically in in the history of the Israelites. And so we're looking at David a lot in, in First Chronicles. All right, and so let's read 15 through 17. After David had constructed buildings for himself in the city of David, he prepared a place for the ark of God and he pitched a tent for it. Then David said, no one but the Levites may carry the ark of God because the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to minister before him forever. David assembled all Israel in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. He called together descendants of Aaron and the Levites from the descendants of Kohath, Uriel, the leader, and 120 relatives from the descendants of Merari, Esia, the leader, and 220 relatives from the descendants of Gershon, Joel, the leader, and 130 relatives from the descendants of Elizabeth, El Elizaphan, Shemia, the leader, and 200 relatives from the descendants of Hebron, Eliel, the leader, and 80 relatives from the descendants of Uziel, Aminadab, the leader, and 112 relatives. Then David summoned Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, and Uriel, as um, Isaiah, Joel, Shemia, Eliel, and Aminadab, the Levites. He said to them, you are the heads of the Levitical families. You and your fellow Levites are to consecrate yourselves and bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. It was because you, the Levites, did not bring it up the first time when that the Lord, our God, broke out in anger against us. We did not inquire of him about how to do it in the prescribed way. So the priests and Levites co consecrated themselves in order to bring up the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel. And the Levites carried the ark of God with poles on their shoulders, as Moses had commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their fellow Levites as musicians to make a joyful noise, joyful sound with musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Heman, the son of Joel, from his relatives, Asaph, son of Berechiah, and from their relatives, the Merorites, Ethan, the son of Cushia. And with them, their relatives next in rank, Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemaramoth, Jaleel, Uni, Eliah, Eliah Beniah, Messiah, Mittathiah, Elphalu, Mikniah, Mc, Mc, Obed-Edom, and Jeel, the gatekeepers. The musicians, Heman, Asaph, Asaph, and Ethan, were to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Jaziel, Shemaramoth, Jael, Uni, Eliab, and Messiah, and Beniah were to play the lyres, according to Elamoth, and Metathiah, El Eliphalu, uh, Mikniah, Obed-Edom, Jael, and Azaz Azaziah were to play the harps, directing, according to Sheminith. Kenaniah, the head Levite, was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. Berechiah and El Elkanah were to be doorkeepers for the ark. Uh, Shemaniah, Joshaphat, Josh uh, Nathanael, and Amasai, Zechariah, Beniah, and Eleazar, the priests were to blow trumpets before the ark of God. Obed-Edom and Jaiah 
were also to open the doorkeepers, to be the doorkeepers for the ark. So David and the elders of Israel and the commanders of units of thousand, of a thousand went to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord from the house of Obed-Edom with rejoicing. Because God had helped the Levites who were carrying the ark of the covenant of the Lord, seven bulls and seven rams were sacrificed. Now David was clothed in a robe of fine linen as were all the Levites who were carrying the ark and as were the musicians in Kenaniah who was in charge of the singing of the choirs. David also wore a linen ephod. So all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouts and with the sounding of ram's horns and trumpets and of cymbals and the playing of lyres and harps. As the ark of the covenant of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, the daughter of Saul, watched from a window. And when she saw King David dancing and celebrating, she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of God and set it inside the tent that David had, David had pitched for it. And they presented burnt offerings and fellowship offerings before God. After David had finished sacrificing the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins to each Israelite man and woman. He, he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to extol, thank, and praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph was the chief, and next to him in rank were Zechariah, then Jehaziel, Shemamroth, Gael, Jael, Mattathiah, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael. They were to play halirs and harps. Asaph was to sound the cymbals, and Benaiah and Jazel, the priests, were to blow the trumpets regularly before the Ark of the Covenant of God. That day David first appointed Asaph and his associates to give praise to the Lord in this manner. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his Lord, holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Israel, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you, I will give the land of Canaan as to the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to oppress them. For their sake, he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do not pro do not do my Prophets, no harm. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and joy are in his dwelling. Ascribe to the Lord, all you family of nations. Ascribe to the Lord great glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us, God, our Savior. Gather us and deliver us from the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. David left Asaph and his associates before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord to minister there regularly, according to each day's requirements. He also left Obed-Edom and his 68 associates to minister with them. Obed-Edom, the son of Jeduthun, and also Hosea were gatekeepers. David left Zadok the priest and his fellow priests before the tabernacle of the Lord at the high place in Gibeon to present burnt offerings to the Lord on the altar of burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, with accordance, in accordance with everything written in the law of the Lord, which he had given to Israel. With them were Herman, Heman, and Jeduthun, 
and the rest of those chosen and designated by name to give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Heman and Jeduthun, Jeduthun were responsible for the sounding of the trumpets and the cymbals, and for the playing of the other instruments for sacred song. The sons of Jeduthun were stationed at the gate. Then all the people left, each for their own home, and David returned home to bless his family. After David was settled in his palace, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in the house of cedar, while the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. Nathan replied to David, Whatever you have in mind, do it, for God is with you. But that night the Lord of God came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, This is what the Lord says. You are not the one to build my, me a house to dwell in. I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought Israel up out of Egypt to this day. I have moved from one tent site to another, from one dwelling place to another. Whenever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their leaders whom I commanded to shepherd my people, why have you not built a house, me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I, I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also subdue all your enemies. I declare to you that the Lord will build a house for you. When you are, your days are over, and you go to be with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, one of your own sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for me, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and be, and he will be my son. I will never take my love away from him, as I took it away from your predecessor. I will set, up, set him over my house and my kingdom forever. His throne will be established forever." Nathan reported to David all the words of this entire revelation. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord and said, and he said, who am I, Lord God, and what is my family that you have bought, brought me this far? And as if, as if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. What more can David say to you for honoring your servant? For, your, for you know your servant, Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all of these pro great promises. There is no one like you, Lord, and there is no one, no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. And who is like your people, Israel, the one nation on earth, whose God went out to redeem a people for himself and to make a name for himself and to perform great and wonder, awesome deep wonders by driving out nations from before your people, whom you redeemed from Egypt. You made your people, Israel, your very own forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord, let the promise you have made concerning your servant and his house be established forever. Do as you promised so that it will be established and that your name, the will be great forever. Then people will say, the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, is Israel's God, and the house of your servant David will be established before you. You, my God, have revealed to you, your servant that you will build a house for him. So your servant has found courage to pray to you. You, Lord, our God, you have promised these good things to your servant. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant that it may continue forever in your sight. For you, Lord, have blessed it and it will be blessed forever. I love the promises of God, and it's a good reminder. They stand firmly on the promises of God, that God is going to bless, and he does. All right, let's move over to second, the Song of Psalms. Song of Songs, and uh, let's read chapter one. Uh, let me kiss him, let me, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. For your love is more delightful than wine. Pleasing is the fragrance of your perfumes. Your name is like perfume poured out. No wonder the young women love you. Take me away with you. Let us hurry. Let the king bring me into his chambers. We rejoice and delight in you. We will praise your love more than wine. 
Arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. See, the winter is past, the rains are over and gone. Flower, flowers appear on the earth. The season of singing has come. <clears throat> the cooing of doves. Oop. Sorry about that. My page is stuck together. We're going to start back over in chapter one. All right, Solomon, the Song of Songs. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is more delightful than wine, pleasing is the fragrance of your perfumes. Your name is like perfume poured out. No wonder the young women love you. Take me away with you. Let us hurry. Let the king bring me into his chambers. We rejoice and delight in you. We will praise your love more than wine. How right they are to adore you. Dark am I, yet lovely, daughters of Jerusalem. Dark like the tents of Keter, like the tent curtains of Solomon. Do not stare at me because I am dark, because I am darkened by the sun. My mother's sons were angry with me and made me take care of the vineyards. My own vineyard I had to, neg had to neglect. Tell me, you whom I love, where you raise your flock and where you rest your sheep at midday. Why should I be like a veiled woman beside the flocks of your friends? If you do not know, most beautiful of women, follow the tracks of the sheep and graze your young goats by the tents of the shepherds. I liken you, my darling, to a mare among Pharaoh's chariot horses. Your cheeks are beautiful with earrings, your neck with strings of jewels. We will make your earrings of gold studded with silver. While the king was at his table, my perfume spread its fragrance. My beloved is to me a sachet of myrrh resting between my breasts. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blossoms from the vineyards of En Gedi. How beautiful you are, my darling. Oh, how beautiful. Your eyes are doves. How handsome you are, my beloved. Oh, how charming. And our bed is verdant. The beams of our house are cedars. Our rafters are firs. All right. Song of Songs, chapter one. And um, it's a traditional wedding celebrations in the Middle East. Uh, they cast the bride and the groom in the roles of king and queen. And um, <clears throat> so these songs are arranged to tell the courtship story of a man and a woman, of their marriage, and it's a consummation in the beginning of their new life together. And so what happens after the after a short introduction of the book, it presents kind of six episodes, each typically ending with a reference to the friends of the man and the woman. And uh, this I may refer to others attending the wedding to join in the celebration. Together, the songs celebrate the delights of a married love and beauty of the human body using vivid imagery and natural. The natural world to show that these things are a part of God's creation and that God declared them very good. So, uh, all right, we've we've uh, finished Song of Songs, Chapter One. All right. All right. Well, let's pray together and uh, we will uh, we'll jump back in tomorrow as we continue on through uh, First Chronicles. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the reminder that, Lord, marriage um, marriage is, uh, is your design, relationship between a man and a woman, your design. And God, we thank you that, uh, Lord, you put your hand um, upon us. You created us, and you have a design and a purpose for everything. Lord, we apologize. God, we are sorry. We repent over the fact that we have a world that is deconstructing everything, deconstructing language, deconstructing, deconstructing um, their faith, deconstructing Christianity, deconstructing um, sexuality, deconstructing gender. God, we just we admit that we have a we have a world that is 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 now just trying to deconstruct and re, uh, redefine everything. But Lord, we. We stand firm with you, God, in your design, and we, we follow your lead, God, as you have a design for us. And so, Lord, just teach us and help us, um, help us to stand firm in believing that you have a design for us, Lord. We love you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, thank you for joining me, and uh, we will uh, we'll get back to, together tomorrow and continue on uh, with our reading. All right. God bless you. Hope you have a wonderful day.